Hello, welcome to Soapbox. I'm your host tonight, James Israel. And um, first we want to thank our sponsors. We have uh, Pieces Pizza by The Slice, including low-fat, vegetarian, and gluten-free options, as well as a fine selection of beer, wine, and soft drinks. We thank them for keeping us fueled here by supplying pizza for the crew. They're at uh, 1309 21st Street in Sacramento, and you can phone them at 916-441-1949. Also, the Humor Times, which calls itself the world's funniest news source. The monthly political humor magazine is available worldwide by subscription, in print, or digital format. Their motto is, don't cry about the news, laugh about it with the Humor Times. Cartoons, funny fake news videos, and more can be found at humortimes.com. All right. Well, tonight my guest is Sue Hillebrand. Um, she is the host of The Real Issue, a progressive public affairs talk show on KZFR 90.1 FM Chico. Subjects range from electoral politics and foreign policy to homelessness and the environment. She is also the co-producer of an upcoming PBS documentary titled One Nation Under the Sun, with, Under the Gun, sorry, One Nation Under the Gun, which uh, we'll be talking about tonight. Uh, we'll also have a trailer of the movie for you to see. Um, Sue holds a master's degree in comparative politics from the American University in Washington, D.C., and teaches in the political science department at both California State University, Chico, and Butte College in Northern California. Welcome, Sue. Thanks. Thanks for being here tonight. So, One Nation Under the Sun, it's a feature-length documentary that's coming out soon. Um, when, when do you expect it to actually come out? One Nation Under the Gun. The Under the Gun. Did I say sun again? That's okay. Oh, man. We're, the schedule, our, our schedule is um, uh, September. So we okay. originally we decided we wanted to release this before the elections, ah. and so uh, that's the goal. Okay, that's the goal. Excellent. Um, so uh, the the uh, I was reading uh, how the uh, the film takes a new approach and asks why. So I'm going to ask you why. Why are we uh, taking on this issue? What's the uh, what's the problem with guns in America today? Well, <laughs> well, I don't know what the problem is quite yet. The reason we're taking it on is because I wanted to do. Um, my co-producer Dan Carter and I decided we wanted to do another. We did a, a television series about water and the drought in California, and we decided we wanted to do another one. And so I thought about what topic should we take on, and sort of naively I said let's take on the gun issue and I thought let's you know I'll, I'll do some research for a few months we'll whip out a few fil a film or a few episodes on for TV right. and uh, and I learned that this is a very complicated debate it's a very complicated issue that's being approached very superficially um, and so that's why we're taking it on I couldn't find the answers that I found satisfying and so we're seeking out the answers we haven't come to any yet, but uh -huh. uh, we're still looking. Well, the the film uh, basically kind of tries to spark debate, right? So you're not really trying to come to a conclusion so much as to talk about the issue, look at both sides. Exactly, exactly. Very early on, we decided we did not want to take on, we didn't want to take a position, and the reason for that is because. The more I learn about the debate um, and the issue, there's not a clear position. I mean, on the, on the one hand, we could say get rid of all guns. Um, that's not very realistic. Um, and I think to do nothing is not satisfying. And in terms of a, um, a self-governing society, to do nothing is, doesn't feel good to people. Um, so we're not taking on a position. And, and, the, and what I've realized is this debate is very nuanced. Um, and if you listen to the mainstream media, it seems pretty black and white, but it isn't. Mm -hmm. So part of what we're doing is we're identifying the missing voices, um, and we're going to present them. There are so many valid views of guns and the role of guns in society. And so 
Um, just as a quick example, we are going to LA and we're going to talk with um, a hip hop artist who was not, you know, if, if you know anything about hip hop, it's a way for um, inner city youths to stay out of the gang life. It's, a, it's an alternative to the gangs and the drugs and, and um, it's important. The hip hop culture is very important for, for young men, young black men. And what we've come, we've, you know, met this uh, hip hop artist who was not involved in, gang, in gangs at all down in LA, but he was a victim of, gang, of a gang shooting. Mm -hmm. a, a, a gang bangers drove up while he was sitting on his front porch and they shot him and he mm -hmm. survived. And the survivors of gun violence are not often part of the conversation. And this man um, comes from poverty. He doesn't have the money to buy pain medication. Mm -hmm. And we don't think about that. And mm -hmm. so this is not to say, therefore, we should get rid of guns. Instead, it's to say, let's look at the larger context of what's happening here. Why are there so many guns in inner cities? And why are generally, you know, liberal, white, progressives, why are we okay with inner city violence as long as it doesn't happen to us? And, mm -hmm. and part of this film is to, is to bring up those questions. Right. So. Yeah, it does uh, seem like the issue, um, you know, it's not, it's not in the face of um, a certain segment of the population that's not in the inner city that doesn't have to deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis. And so, you know, it might be easy to just say, oh, that's, you know, it's not such a problem. Right. But uh, it is for, depending on where you live. It, it is, and, 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 and what I've been finding is um, we see, we see the, the rise of mass shootings. And that's, it's a very random act of violence. It could happen to any one of us. Mm -hmm. And still, if you look at the percentage of gun deaths and, and, and gun violence resulting in, in injury, mass shootings, random mass shootings are very rare. Right. Um, and, and the number one cause of gun deaths, death by guns, is suicide. And we actually have a slide um, that you provided about that, a slide number two there, if they, they could show it, um, gun deaths versus uh, suicide. Um, but um, yeah, that's, that's what gets the attention of the media, you know, is the uh, dramatic uh, deaths. And uh, there was a big spike, it looks like, in the first half of the 90s, but that's gone down quite a bit since then. And, and the suicide deaths have gone up. Exactly, and suicide deaths have gone up. And that's another part of what we're asking is why? Why are suicide deaths coming up uh, on the rise? Um, and, you know, we can put that in what I believe, and I've talked to a lot of experts, and a lot of it has to do with the last 30, 40 years with the culture wars, with um, neoliberal economic uh, policies. We've seen the exportation of uh, blue-collar jobs. Mm -hmm. um, we have seen um, uh, uh, really nasty politics. And so I, I think so much is changing. Um, we've seen the rise of, for example, we've seen the rise of Black Lives Matter. So we've, we've seen the changing demographics and we've seen the changing economic system and people are afraid. Um, and I think we have veterans coming back from war and they're not being uh, uh, treated for PTSD. They're not getting the, the mental health care mm -hmm. that they need. And so that's part of the film is we're, we're asking, why are, are suicides on the rise? Mm -hmm. And particularly, if we're going to seriously consider how to reduce gun violence, we need to, to, to acknowledge that most of it comes from suicide. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, one thing I've, I've always felt, um, you know, like it's, it's pretty hard to get a driver's license. You know, you have to study the test. You have to take a, an actual physical test. Uh, we have a slide that I wanted to show you a slide uh, about the um, uh, gun violence versus uh, motor vehicle deaths. And um, is that, that is what it's showing, right? Yes. And the uh, motor vehicle deaths has gone down quite a bit because of the safety things that we've implemented. And, and you know, maybe that has to do with um, pe the fact that we make people learn how to drive the car before we give them a license. But it seems like um, getting a license for the use of a gun is a lot easier 
isn't it, in most places? And uh, can you talk about that? Shouldn't, shouldn't that be a little more difficult? Well, that's part of the conversation. Right. Um, you know, one of the arguments I have been, and, you know, when you asked me why did we take on this issue, and one of them is when I decided to take on guns, my first... Uh, the, the, the moment where I thought this is going to be a very serious adventure for me as I explore the gun debate is I, I casually, I, ta I was talking to, to acquaint, an acquaintance and she said, oh, what are you working on now? And, and I said, um, hey, we're going to take on guns. And she launched into why the, uh, gun violence is not a problem. Mm. And she talked about there's more deaths from automobiles and we should get rid of automobiles. And I realized that she she, I don't think she intentionally did it, but she shut me down. Mm -hmm. and, and I realized, as I tried to scramble with a response to what she was saying, is I realized she didn't want a response. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was just to, to stop me, to tell me why this wasn't an issue that I should be pursuing. Yeah. Um, and, and that's a lot of what I hear a lot is, it's not an issue. Gun violence is not a problem. We see more deaths from cars, and therefore mm -hmm. we should outlaw cars. Uh -huh. And the truth is, we have regulated cars quite a bit, and we right. require a lot of training. And we have made major safety advantage advantages with cars. And as that as that clip showed, we're getting to a point where car automobile deaths are lower than um, than gun deaths. Mm -hmm. But again, I have to keep throwing in: this is not random mass shootings. Right. This is suicide. Yeah. Two thirds of all gun deaths are suicide. And so, um, I think that's a different policy prescription than simply outlawing guns. It's a very complicated issue. Yeah, yeah. Very complicated. Well, um, I'd like to show the viewers a, a video clip of the movie. We have one, um, it's a, um, what would you call it, a primer for the movie? It's a, uh, yeah, it's the trailer. It's trailer. the trailer for our, basically our fundraising efforts. Okay, yeah. all right. And uh, that is something we should mention. You're, you're, you have an ongoing fundraiser for it. It's, it's a, we're doing a Kickstarter. This is our kick first started. stage. It's our it's our Kickstarter campaign, and it'll go for 30 days. And in while we have been spending all of our own money and really racking up the credit card bills, mm -hmm. um, it, that was to get enough of the footage. I mean, we've traveled. We've been to Texas, and we've been to New York, and we've been to Southern California, and we've you mm -hmm. know we've gathered all of this footage. And so now it's a matter of we have to put it together so that we can pitch it a rough cut to other organizations that will actually help us fund it to completion. Okay. Do we have that clip? Apparently not yet. So the one the Kickstarter thing is only a, a 30 days? You can choose your own um, own your own time, but we we did mm -hmm. it for 30 days. Okay. Yeah. I've learned a lot about Kickstarter these past uh -huh. few months. Uh -huh. So yeah, the shorter the campaigns are, the more likely you'll reach your goal. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, here it goes. Americans seem hopelessly divided about the role of guns in society. We have two sides that are highly polarized, and there is growing animosity on both sides. They're retreating to their own corners. To bridge this chasm, only through exposing the myths and misconceptions can we the people have meaningful dialogue. I don't think there's any debate today that is more burdened with mythology than the gun debate and with a false history and a lot of assumptions about what other people are thinking. From the Minutemen who patrol our southern border and the recreational hunters, to the casualties of inner city violence and anonymous victims of suicide, Americans have complex and contradictory relationships with the gun. This issue is a lot more nuanced than people would tend to think uh, just from the media sound bites. That gun control will diminish. Today's gun debate seems to focus almost exclusively on the Second Amendment and the rights of the individual. And although that's important, it must not stop there. As citizens of a democratic nation, it is our responsibility to govern ourselves not only as individuals, but as communities. We must ask ourselves, what makes a good society and how do we get there? Now, regardless of how you answer those questions, the current debate is lacking. It is time we re-engage in our democracy.
And if you're interested in expanding the debate, visit our project page and help us get there. All right. Very good. That's, that's a good clip there. Um, so there's, a, there's an American mythology and political identity with guns. Um, can democracy exist in an armed society? Well, the, the idea, one of the threads in the film is about American mythology. Um, there is, there's a question that I ask everybody, and like I said, we've done many interviews already. We've done about 15 interviews, we have a lot of hours. <laughs> and one of the questions that I ask every single person is, what does a gun mean to you? And then what we did for, you know, to kind of get people excited about the work that we're doing is, we took all of those answers and we just put them back to back. And some of the answers were pretty exciting. And what I mean by that is, you know, some people said, a woman in particular, um, the, the, the founder of an all-female shooting league down in Texas. Well, it's national now. Mm -hmm. And she said, she said, it's so much fun. It's a lifestyle. It's, you know, when you think of the, the fun involved in the shooting sport. Mm -hmm. So it's fun for her. And, you know, somebody else said, and I quote, it's a, oh, and he is one of the, the founders of the Huey P. Newton Gun Club down in Dallas, Texas. And he said, it's an organizing tool. It's a, it's a political tool to organize the masses. And, and so somebody else said, it gives me confidence. And so the whole point of this is, one, often it's argued that it's just, an ob it's just an object. The NRA will say, guns don't kill people, people do. Well, when we put that kind of an emotional um, connection, when we have this emotional bond to an object, we have to, and, a, and an object that is quite deadly, um, we have to examine that. What, where do we get this? And what I say to people all the time is, do you have that kind of romantic connection to your hammer, a real tool? Right. And so that's one of the things that we're exploring is, where did this mythology come from? It certainly, it certainly doesn't come back from, from real history. I mean, when we think about the American Revolution, um, not everybody had a gun. Most people did not, and they did not have a handgun like we do now. Mm -hmm. They certainly did not have uh, AR-15s. They didn't have those kinds of guns. Most people had um, rifles to shoot coyotes, um, things like that, and, you know, basically pests. And so one and of the things- they were one-shot muskets e exactly. that you had to stop. And e exactly. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, you couldn't take out an army right there. There was right. a, you know, it wasn't quite as deadly as it is today. Mm -hmm. And so one thing that we're exploring is where did this mythology of the American West come from? And of course it came from Hollywood, but it even predates the, you know, the 40s and the 50s of Hollywood with, um, you know, um, Clint Eastwood and, you know, uh, uh, those folks. Um, it, it really started back in the early 20th century with the Winchester Gun Company and Colt, where they, as after the Industrial Revolution, people started moving to the cities. And when you move to the cities, you don't need those kinds of guns. Right. And so they saw their market shrinking, mm. and what they decided to do very strategically as good capitalists, they mm. said, we need to create our market. And they started to create this emotional connection. And they had ads. They had these advertisements that said things like, your son wants a gun so badly, he doesn't even have the words for it. <laughs> Buy him a gun. <laughs> and so we created this mythology about, yeah. uh, and, they, and another tactic they used was, this is human nature. This is part of who your boy is. Give him a gun. Hmm. And then you bring in, um, uh, uh, Hollywood and we've actually through popular culture we've actually changed the national narrative and we remember the Old West as having guns everywhere and that's mm -hmm. it's simply not true and so it's not to say and therefore we get rid of guns it's to say why do we have this you know emotional connection why do I and I talk to people their identity is wrapped up in gun culture and, um, and we all do. I mean, we all sort of choose the sides. Are we Democrats or Republicans? Or, no, I won't take you. You're the one of those. I'm a Green Party member. You know, and so we, we choose our sides. Mm -hmm. and, and the gun culture is an identity. And, and the gun culture is under attack. And they're, they're fighting back. They're right. pushing back. 
Very interesting. So you're telling me in the Wild West, uh, not everyone had two six guns strapped to their side? Not everybody had, to, yes. Mm. Handguns Gosh. were very rare. Uh -huh. Very rare back in the Old West. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, what else, um, what else can we talk about? What, do, what would you like people to know about this upcoming documentary? Well, another, another uh, thread that we're going to talk about is the idea of democracy and guns. And, um, you know, the, one of the people that has been advising me quite a bit as a philosopher, his name is uh, Furman de Brabander out of um, the Maryland Institute of Art. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is fair, he's very interesting. He's, he's not a... Um, he doesn't have a deep, deep, deep history with guns, but when we started to see more mass shootings, he got very involved in sort of the philosophy of guns and democracy, and he has gone back to Machiavelli, and what did Machiavelli say about guns and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, he has a very interesting take on it. One of the things that he argues is, of course, Machiavelli advised the prince, don't take away guns. and. What most people remember is Machiavelli said, don't take away guns from the people because they'll just get mad at you. Hmm. What he also said, according to this philosopher, Furman de Brabander, he said, as long as the people have guns, then they distrust each other. Hmm. And if they distrust each other, they can't organize against the prince. Uh, it's another interesting angle. Uh -huh. um, and it, you know, philosophers say a whole bunch of stuff, and some come <laughs> true, and some certainly don't. But yeah. um, it, that's another part of it, and we're going to examine it from the perspective of campus carry. There's a lot of uh, universities that are allowing guns on campus, mm -hmm. where in the past they they weren't allowed. And so, we went down to Austin, Texas, a very in a in a in a very conservative state. We went to the very liberal town of Austin, and um, we had the conversation about why do all you lefty liberal you know college professors why don't you why don't you want guns on campus and and part of what they say is it's an admission to violence in a in a sacred space where we need to be able to be uncomfortable with ideas mm -hmm. without allowing these tools of violence and then of course certainly interviewed people that said I don't care what you're saying, it's my right mm -hmm. and, and I should be able to protect myself. And so we're, we're playing with that as well. The idea, the, the philosophical aspect of guns and, and an armed society and can you have democracy like that? Right. Yeah. Um, we have some web addresses to show. Um, there's one for the movie itself, one for the funding. So could we get those up there? Um, and then meanwhile, um, you brought up guns on campus. It seems like there's just some places where, you know, it just doesn't seem right to have guns. Bars is one. It's a bad you idea know, to have alcohol and guns. It seems like a bad <laughs> idea. I mean, come on. Uh, why, and then why would you need one in church, you know? Um, but, you know, there's like, there's a movement to to allow that, you know, allow them anywhere, as you say, and people claim it's their right. But um, college campuses, you know, f that really does not seem like a place where they would be needed or, or um, and it seems like you're asking for trouble, that people are, people are young, you know, um, maybe, you know, ha haven't learned to control their emotions as much as um, uh, people with more experience in life might. Um, and then, like you say, there's there's uh, an exchange of ideas. There's going to be arguments. You know, why have something around that people can kill each other with? Uh, just let them duke it out if they're going to do that. But, uh, <laughs> and, you know, and, and I bring that up with everybody that I talk with about the issue. Not everybody I talk with, but about the particular issue is, you know, I've talked with many college professors and asked them, do you, what do you think is going to happen? Do you really think somebody's going to pull out a gun and shoot somebody else? And I haven't had a single college professors say yes that's my concern none of them have mm. and it's always been that sort of that atmosphere it's you know when we think of about a, of, a, of, of democracy you know um, the value of democracy is we have to listen to each other and we have to hear each other and we have to negotiate and we have to really um, 
understand things from everybody else's perspective. That's how democracy works. And when we're, sometimes when you go to university, for the, when you leave your home, when you leave the place where you have been raised, where you have learned your worldviews, and you go to university, it's the first time where you actually have to become a citizen of a democracy. You have to practice democracy. And that's the argument is, as we practice being democratic citizens, we should not have uh, instruments of violence. That's their argument. It is, I haven't, I haven't spoken with a single person that says, I'm worried a gun is going to be pulled and somebody will be shot over an idea. Having said that, we have seen college campuses where guns have been pulled out. Um, but that's not the fear. It's more the philosophical mm -hmm. aspect mm -hmm. of do we really want to have guns in a sacred space, an exchange of ideas? Right. That's the concern. Right. Well, there's, like you say, it's a very complex, complex uh, subject, and I'm um, happy you could be here today to, to bring up some of those, um, some of those uh, controversies. Uh, my guest has been Sue Hillebrand of uh, Chico KZFR, and the movie that we are discussing is called One Nation Under the Gun. Uh, I encourage you to go to the website, check it out. Um, Help them uh, with their, uh, what's the funding? Kickstarter. Kickstarter program. The best way to connect with us is right on Facebook. We're very active. Okay. It's One Nation Under the Gun on uh, Facebook. Very, very easy to connect with everything you need. All right. right. So go there, to, go to Facebook, check it out. And uh, thanks for watching tonight. Um, this has been Soapbox. And uh, my name is James Israel. This is Sue Hillebrand. And uh, really glad you could be here tonight. Thank you. To talk about this. Thank you. Situation